One of the things that where a lot of people begin is, where did we come from? That's a philosophical question. The answer to that is, without any outside information, no one knows. Did you know that? So you have to be told by someone else. Now, as far as we know, no one was there, right, at the, that we know of, that we can ask. Isn't that true? So everybody's in a position of looking at data. What's out there? What story may exist? What kind of thing has been transmitted throughout history? All of that kind of stuff. And it basically has come down, really, in many cases, to two camps. Either people tend to believe that there was no God and he wasn't part of it, and that there was random processes, if I can put it that way, that created our complex world. Or they believe that um, God created it. Or they might acknowledge maybe an intelligent being of some sort or what have you, depending on their comfortability with it. Okay. So one of the big things as we go through, and you know, you'll, you may hit on some of this. Obviously, you're going to hit on it in biology. You hit on it for sure in understanding the times. We'll go into it in depth with the six worldviews. But I just thought we'd start right now with a 30-minute clip of somebody interviewing people about what they thought. And then what I want to do is I want your real opinions. So I'm going to have you doing a lot of talking to each other. So I want you to pay attention. I want you to agree or disagree. I'm not asking you to make any decisions now on anything. I just want to throw this out to you. Okay? So I want you to think about it. And then maybe we'll talk about your experience on it. Sound good? So can you pay attention? Are we going to be good with this? Yes. Shake your head yes if you agree with me. Yes. All right. We're all right. Okay, Wayne, go for it. Faith is the great cop-out, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. Richard Dawkins. Imagine visiting some of the world's most prestigious universities, interviewing top evolutionary scientists, atheists, and holding their feet to the fire until it's clear that there is no evidence for Darwinian evolution, that it's not scientific. So we have thousands of examples. Give me, can you give me one? I can give you, I can give you thousands, just one. To summarize, the observable evidence that you give me for Darwinian evolution is bacteria becoming bacteria. Still bacteria, there's no change of kinds. Evolution versus God. If you believe in evolution, prepare to have your faith shaken. You know, the, the problem with those who are unable to see evolution, I think, is they don't have imaginations. That is so true. Interesting, I thought the, one of the points, too, was you heard a lot of word, the word trust, correct? Another, probably another term for faith. I trust where the information is coming from. And many times that's shrouded uh, as far as in expertise. I trust the expert. Now, I don't know if there's anybody that would say that any of us in this room or anybody in the entire world is capable of being fully 100% honest all the time, especially when we have a bias. If it's just left to our own opinion, it always devolves into what's best for us. If we're left to our own means, it'll always be ultimately what's best for us. Very difficult to make decisions for the good of other people without something outside of ourselves. So we hear the word trust. And we hear the word faith. It took a couple questions, took a couple levels, right, to kind of get down to it a little bit before they got, they got over the cliche kind of thing, that it's just facts, it's science, right? You hear that, you've been in those disagreements maybe before on that. I want to ask you something, uh, going back to the, the idea of morality, I just want to share one thing with you. Yesterday, I was talking to one of our tradesmen and one of the guys that's working up in the upstairs. And he asked me, we got on the subject of how did we pay for this construction? I said it was donors. And his comment was, wow, you can do a lot with that Bible money, can't you? It's a little edge to that comment. I said, well, there's people that are generous and we're grateful for it. It was donations that were raised and everything. And he said, I don't believe any of this stuff. I just think man should be good and do what's right. And we don't need God and we don't need anything else. And so I did say to him, I said, well, can I make a comment? He said, sure. I said, first of all, you can't say anything is good for anybody else unless you have something outside of yourself telling you what that good is 
and you can't even make that comment without the Judeo-Christian morality. You can't. There's that's a, there's nothing else there that'll that'll allow you to be moral. That there's a moral code from outside of us, not just made up by our culture. And he took that. He said, you know, I've never thought of that before. Maybe that's maybe that's true. And what was interesting then. He taught the issue is never the issue. And what it turns out is he's mad at God. It's not that he didn't believe in God. And maybe you know people or maybe you're in that position sometimes where you're mad at God. And so I want to say things aren't true. And I'm guessing that you, if you'd have dug a little deeper, maybe some of those people you would have talked to, I want to keep it outside. You know, I want to make it uh, not known or whatever in that regard. 